Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 407. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my College website link, and you can download the workbook Excel Magic Trick 407 to 412. Hey, in this trick, we want to see an amortization table with a variable rate. Now, in other videos, I've done straight amortization tables. I've done amortization tables with lump sum, but this one is going to be variable rate. Rate. Now, I want to remind you how we do a amortization table uh, without a variable rate, and then we'll do it with a variable rate. Now, what is an amortization table? It shows you how much the banker steals from each loan payment you make. Oh, wait a second. It's, it's not stealing. It's called contractual extraction. Because you send in, say, a thousand bucks, and what do they do? You send in a thousand bucks on your balance, and they say, "Oh, we're going to take nine hundred and fifty-five dollars," and then whatever is left over is how much they'll reduce your loan. So then the loan would be uh, this minus this. So you sent in a thousand bucks; they only applied forty-five bucks of it to your loan. So then the balance is nine 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 five five. All right. So the whole trick is um, we want to see how much they steal. I mean, contractually extract each period. Right. So that's the interest right there. All right. So how do we do this? Well, these formulas uh, we're going to have to do a, a calculation for interest and for our payment. Now, the way you do this uh, is you use the pay PMT equals PMT. Now, the finance and the formulas behind this are beautiful, but uh, we're in the age of Excel, so we don't need to memorize those great annuity formulas. The rate, well, the rate. We're going to have to hit Escape here and put in an annual rate. Now, I'm going to start with 0 0.095 annual rate. And uh, we'll copy this all the way down, and that'll be our column that we'll be allowed to change. We'll start off by just having it straight as 0 0.095. Ah, <clears throat> that's the annual rate, but these are monthly periods. It could be whatever semi-annual, uh, quarterly, but these are going to be monthly. So there's the periods per year. So I'm going to start off my PMT equals PMT. And I have lots of videos on PMT that show you all the variations on this. But for us, we're simply going to take our rate um, divided by our 12. Oh, wait a second. We have annual rate. Why do we have to divide it up? Because the PMT is going to be a monthly payment. So all of the inputs here have to be in the same period month. Now, I'm going to lock this one here. I'm going to hit the F4 key, comma, NPER. Now, NPER is how many total periods. Now, I'm going to start off by just uh, taking our years, 30, and I'm going to lock that with the F4 key comma, oops, sorry, times our 12 here, and then hit the F4 key. So this argument NPER is 30 times 12, which is probably 360, comma, and then the present value. Uh, <clears throat> for us, we can just think of it as uh, whatever the current balance is for our loan. So I'm going to click right there and hit the F4 key. Remember, oops, I hit the F5, F4 key to lock it. Now remember. I'm showing you how to do the straight PMT before I show you the variable. All right, the future value of this, there's a balloon payment at the end, which we don't have. And type, the default is end. So we'll use that. If it was begin, uh, we could put that argument. I'm just going to close parentheses and then Control Enter. Now, why is it minus? Because the, uh, these functions and these famous formulas that actually go all the way back to Fibonacci in about the 12th century, uh, no cash flow. So when you send in a payment, that's money out of your wallet. For our our amortization table, I'm going to put a minus. So I'm going to put this into edit mode and put a minus in front of the PMT. The PMT does know the proper cash flow, but this is just for the surface of our spreadsheet. The interest, um, that is always going to be our period rate, which is this divided by this times whatever the balance was for the last period. So as we go down, the reason interest gets smaller over an amortized loan is because the balance goes down over time. So I'm going to say for this period, it's whatever was in the account 
uh, for the last month, which is our original balance there, that's a relative cell reference. So as we copy it down, the next calculation will be off a slightly smaller balance. That's why your interest goes down. So I'm not going to lock that. Uh, and then we have to multiply this, and I'm going to keep that relative because we'll copy this 9.5 down. It will be the same all the way down until later when we change it. And we have to divide by this 12 because our annual rate would be too much. The banker would love it, by the way, if you just multiplied by annual rate, but we're not going to let her or him do that. I'm going to hit F4 to lock that, because that needs to be locked. And there it is. We send in 840. They take 791. Oh, how nice. They left us. And by the way, it's just a relative cell reference, whatever the, we sent in minus whatever the interest is. They left us uh, 49 bucks. How nice of them. So then our balance is a relative cell reference, one above minus uh, one to my left. Now, we can copy these down all together. And the only reason this trick's going to work is because I already put 0, 1, 2, 3 all the way down to 360, by the way. 360 right here. So this example is only going to work for this 360. In other videos, I show you how to have variable time periods. But now, watch this. I have all of these numbers and formulas highlighted. Because there's something to the left, when I double click and send it down, it automatically goes down. Now, what in the world just happened there? That is not supposed to happen. Let's try this again. I'm going to double click and send this down. Uh, it assumed we wanted some increment. Let me do that again, Control Z, when we did it all together. So now I'm just going to highlight that cell and double click. By the way, the way this double click is programmed, it always looks to the left, but that's the second thing it looks at. First, it looks below it. And right now, it's looking below it and say, I'm going to go down and replace everything. So I'm going to double click. And there we have it. Now, I'm going to click here and control down arrow. We can see we get a um, 0 in our balance column. Actually, I'm going to, uh, to make this easy. I'm going to click right there. And I'm going to show you how to freeze panes, because I want to see these labels when I get to the bottom. And I want to see these columns here, too. So I'm going to go up to View. If I even remember where it is, because I know the keyboard shortcut it's Freeze Panes. And there it is in the Freeze Panes. That's because I clicked in that cell that this column and this row is frozen. So now when I go down, or Control Down Arrow, I can still see it. Hey, the reason why this balance is uh, minus 0, there is no such thing as minus 0. There's just a tiny, tiny fraction of a penny there uh, showing up as a negative. If you increase the decimals, you could prove that to yourself. All right, so let's go back up to the top and see how to change this to a variable rate. Now, let's just say um, we get down here to 13. I'm going to change this to 0.10. Oh, no, our interest rate went up. I'm going to Control Enter. And now I'm going to double click and send it down. Let's go look at the bottom of the table. Uh-oh, we've overpaid because the balance near the end has got some extra junk in, uh, uh, junk there. So we have to go up and amend our formula. The whole trick to this is going to be uh, a, a few things. One is, oh, when you're calculating PMT, Notice, this is the present value. But if you have a variable rate, they actually have to recalculate this whole thing. So for example, when we get down right to here where they change the rate, this PMT is looking at that E12, which is the uh, 100,000. But from this point forward, it can't look at that. It needs to look at the current balance, which is that right there. So. If we change the rate, there's a new present value. That means what is the va what's the value of the loan on that day? So it's that. So we're going to have to change uh, that argument there. This one will be just fine. Uh, this one we're going to the sorry the NPER we're going to have to do something really tricky because look when we when for recalculating the whole PMT at this period, there's the new loan balance because the the uh, rate changed here, but it's actually all of the remaining periods. It's not 360. It's 360 minus 12, which is what 348. I'm going to show you a tricky way to do this. And as long as you have your numbers in the uh, first column, it will work. There's other we could do other more complicated ones, but if you have your numbers in the column, there's a super cool way to do this. I'm going to um, put this into edit mode F2. So our rate, relative cell reference, divided by that. That, of course, when this blue one copies down here, when it hits the 0.1, that rate will be um, correct for a variable rate. 
it's this NPER. We cannot use this. We cannot have a fixed rate. As this formula copies down, right here it needs to th say 360. Here it needs to say 359, 358. All right, you ready? We're going to use count. Count counts numbers. I'm going to click in this cell right here. I'm going to control shift down arrow to go to the bottom. And then I'm going to close parentheses. Now I need to get back up to my formula, so I'm going to use the scroll bar right here. And watch this. Right now, this is all relative. So if I copy this down, it would still always have the same number here, which would be 360. By the way, you can highlight this and hit the F9 and prove it to yourself. F9 is evaluate 360. Control Z to undo that. But what if we were to lock the big one and not the small one? So I'm going to put my cursor there and hit the F4 key. <gasps> now, this is a shrinking range. So as we copy our formula down, it will shrink. We've seen expandable range in other videos. One other video I did, I did a shrinking range. But this is a shrinking range. This 13, when we copy this formula down, will then say 14, which will be counting one fewer numbers. By the way, count counts numbers, so we have numbers here and so it will work. So that is a very clever way to get a shrinking number of, if I put my cursor right there, NPERs. And that's exactly what we need because when we get down to here, it needs to be looking here and forward and counting all the remaining periods. All right, and one last thing, this. Simply, it's not locked on the um, 100,000. We can just put our cursor there and then hit the F4 key to cycle through. We need a relative cell reference. Because remember, when the PMT gets down to this new rate, right on this line, it needs to look at the previous balance because that is the new loan amount. This column always tells you if we're paying off the loan today, how much do we have to pay in total? All right, so that will work. I'm going to control enter. I'm going to double click and send it down. And sure enough, when we get down to here, it changed our um, uh, PMT. And let's control down arrow and look. And sure enough, we get a 0 at the end. So that is a variable rate. If um, we come down here, say, to uh, 60, maybe 61. If I change it again, we change this to point, our, our rate went down 0.075. Control Enter to put that in the cell and then double click and send it down. It's programmed to replace everything. And sure enough, when we come down to the bottom, uh, woo, it got exact, or maybe there's a little positive piece of a penny there. That very rarely comes out exactly right. Uh, so that's how to do a variable rate if you had a uh, contract that said, um, uh, well, we're not going to get into lump sum. It depends on what the contract says, but it, we could do this. Let's just say you paid off 25,000 here, or 2,500, oh, we'll say 25,000. If your contract said uh, that from that point forward, your uh, PMT and everything would change, you could simply edit this and then copy it up and down by saying, oh, there's the extra payment minus, and then click right there. I'm going to control enter. Notice I went right to the line where there's a new piece of information, edited the formula. When I control enter, I can't forget. I have to copy it down and I have to copy it up. So the whole column has the same formula. Control enter, double click and send it down, and don't forget to copy it back up too. Right? And so that that is if, because notice it changes our PMT. That's if the contract said, oh, it's when you pay off your, uh, which it probably doesn't. But if it did, that's how you do it. I'm going to control down arrow, and sure enough, we get our 0 there. All right, so that uh, the point of this video was just this uh, variable rate column and our uh, fancy footwork for our PMT to get the uh, PMT to change when we changed our rate. All right, we'll see you next trick.